So you have seen how I obtain these expressions, general expressions in terms of family drag functions, not the solution function, don't mix that up. For example, you can see how I found this result. So that's the limiting forms. Let's see. The z minus z squared, two thirds, three thirds. This is small z limit. And here is the large Z limit. This is large Z. That is classical. This is quantum limit. Okay. You have the notes with you. In the classical limit, we have the following. T, low densities, that means classical limit, small z, In this limit, we find that Z goes like lambda T cube over V. This is the Boltzmann case, isn't it? As in the Boltzmann case. Derivation is in your hands. In this limit, the average occupation number, again, and P comes out to be of the order of lambda T cube V e to the minus beta E P, which is very much smaller than one. And that was also the classical Boltzmann limit. Equation of state, that's important. Summarizing, you have the results PV over KBT is V over lambda T cube, Z minus Z squared, two five times, etc.
You can rewrite this as in the nose. as PV over NKBT. That co comes out to be in this limit. One, which is the classical result, isn't it? But there are corrections. Although small, there are corrections. See, this is a correction to the classical result, isn't it? And that correction is coming from quantum effects. It's not coming from interactions between particles. It is purely quantum mechanical. Well, Quantum effects is what, in this case, power exclusion principle. Extremely important. So when you look at these expressions, you should understand this quantum correction. or contribution. Now let's go to the low temperature limit. Again, looking at your notes. Low temperature limit is not the classical limit as in this case. It is the quantum limit. So even in classical limit, you find some quantum corrections. Low temperatures, high densities. So that in this limit, the opposite happens. This is very large. That means also lambda t is very much greater than V over N to the power one third. So interparticle distance is small compared to thermal wavelength. When thermal wavelength becomes large, you have the quantum limit. In this limit, we find Z more or less equal to E to the beta EF. So we come up with the concept of Fermi energy. And Fermi energy can be found, as I found in my notes, as h bar squared over 2m, 6 pi squared over v, 2 thirds. The physical significance of this is as follows. That was. When you look at the occupation number, well, it is of the order of 1 over e to the beta energy minus the Fermi energy plus one. This is near absolute zero. Mu turns into Fermi energy at absolute zero. Okay. Instead of mu, you have Fermi energy. And if Particle energy is smaller than the Fermi energy. What happens? This turns into one. 
if you are looking at states with smaller energies than the Fermi energy, they are all occupied. Occupation number is one. We have two possibilities in this case of fermions. Either a state is occupied or empty. You cannot put two particles in a, in a state. Power exclusion principle forbids that. Unlike the boson gas, you can put any number of particles in a state there. Otherwise, this number is zero. So if you look at it from a graphical point of view, as a function of energy, it is all one below Fermi energy, zero above. So this behavior of the occupation number, the average occupation number of Fermi Dirac distribution function is showing the fact that you start putting electrons or fermions into available states, at most one particle per state, you fill all the states up to Fermi energy. This is the largest energy state, above which you have no particles. All the states with energies below Fermi energy are occupied and all the energies above it are empty. This is the very low temperature, almost the very degenerate electron gas or fermion gas picture. And it is in conformity with the power exclusion principle, isn't it? You can put only one particle in a state. You cannot put two in a state. So you have to stack particles up in energy, up to the Fermi energy at absolute zero. If you increase the temperature a little bit, you can take some of the particles from the occupied states and put them into empty states. So only a very limited number of fermions around the Fermi level can respond to change in temperature, increase in temperature, isn't it? So it is this region in which the particles, fermions, are able to go to empty states. The other particles cannot go to already filled states. For example, if you want to take a particle in a state like this, you have to give a huge energy to excite it to an empty state. Is that picture clear? Okay. So that's the low temperature thing. If you take spin into account, you have to divide that by G factor. Takes care of spin. If you have electrons, G is 2, that number becomes 3. In getting this, we didn't take spin into account explicitly. Okay? That's the difference. So, we are getting the picture already for the electronic part of the problem or fermionic part of the problem. Now, let's play with thermodynamic functions and I'm going to give you again the derivation myself. 
Let's see how this gas behaves. What is his internal energy? Specific heat, etc. Okay, let's find those thermodynamic functions. I will not go through the whole calculation, give you but the book also is very explicit about this. We have to concentrate on the physics of the problem. The thermodynamic functions start from chemical potential, go to internal energy. Okay, again, a Summary. Well, let's remember the the definitions once more. Z e to the beta mu, cold beta mu nu e to the new. So, new is ln of z. If you take logarithm of both sides, that's what you find, which is mu over kvt. So, the chemical potential then You can use this I will look at low temperature, high density limit soon. And then Z three S plus pi squared over eight. LNZ minus one half. So at low temperatures, high densities, this is the quantum limit, of course. That gives you a mu. KVT mu, which is yeah. This is the important result, isn't it? Pi squared over twelve KVT yeah squared. So you have a correct correction. So at t equals zero, chemical potential becomes the Fermi energy. All the corrections are zero in that limit. But the first correction goes like t to the square. So we can relate this Fermi energy to Fermi temperature by defining this as KBTF, isn't it? It's an en energy. So that thing becomes T over TF. KB will cancel. Yeah? Internal energy also has a simple form. It's 
So that is our result, that, that is important. You have to concentrate on these results and you should try to get them yourself. Of course, studying the notes I'm going to give you, explicit derivation, you have to do the derivations yourself. Internal energy comes out to be well, the expression is quite simple. You sum over the occupied states. Un unoccupied states gives gives you m p equals zero. They don't contribute. We don't have any particles there. So this is expansion of the integral that turns out to be 3 over 5 n e f 1 plus 5 pi squared over 12 t over t f plus other terms. So at t equals zero, these correction terms disappear. You have that result, 3 over 5 NEF. I will give you this calculation to you. Now, specific heat is derivative of this with respect to temperature. The specific heat Turns out to be one half and kb squared pi t over here or c v over n k b pi squared over two t over t r. Well, it has this form, isn't it? Times T or KB T over yeah. Can you Look at that and tell me something about this physical result. The first one is the classical result. We know that. What is this? This is the energy interval KBT around the Fermi energy. These are the fraction of electrons influenced. Okay. Termions, let's say.
only those around the Fermi level can be excited, in other words. When you give heat, they are the ones who have some states to go, empty states. You cannot excite particles from down in energy. Let's keep three more things. Well, one. Oh, everything is coming out nicely. Let's continue with the ham holes for energy. Per particle, three over five. EF, 1 minus 5, 5 squared over 12, that is Helmholtz free energy, and here is entropy. Check these whether these are correct or not. Can you see uh, an important thing here? At low temperatures, as T goes to zero, entropy goes to zero. Isn't it? Extremely important. And same thing for the heat capacity. It also goes to zero as T goes to zero. That means these results are in good agreement with the third law of thermodynamics. They both have to go to zero as temperature goes to zero. And another thing which is interesting, physically we have to deal with it. It is the pressure. Pressure comes out to be from that general expression 2 over 5 EF over V 1 plus 5 pi squared over 12 KBT. Can you tell me something about this? Wonderful. Very good. Even at zero temperature, pressure doesn't become zero. Contrary to the other case. Where is it coming from? Why do you think You have still a finite pressure, even at zero temperature. Why do you have this result? For fermions, you should have this result. Simply because you can put only one particle to zero momentum state, ground state, let's say. The other particles should go to higher momentum states. So, you cannot make pressure zero. In the boson case, you can have them going into peak or zero state because pressure is coming from momentum exchange with the walls of the container, isn't it? So, higher momentum states means pressure. So, for fermions, you cannot put more than one particle at the zero momentum state. The others have finite momentum, that means pressure. 
Or looking at our earlier lecture about fermions, of course, you cannot put them into the same state, means they effectively repel each other, isn't it? There is a pressure towards the outer limit of the box, isn't it? They don't like to be together. So This result is perfect, okay, in line with what we have found. High momentum states in for fermions have more particles than in the classical case. Okay. Very good. This low temperature limit is extremely important. So Here are the explicit derivations of these results. Don't mix up the pages, okay? <coughs> so we can stop here and discuss a little bit of physics. Do you have any questions? <coughs>